Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode will be episode 5 in our introduction to Pi game with Python series on this channel. Um, and if you missed the first four, here's where the game is at. Today we have a rectangle controlled by the player attempting to dodge a ball which increments your score every time it hits the wall. So if you haven't been following along um, and you're just here for the concepts discussed in this specific video, that's fine. But if you'd like to build this game together as we build it, I suggest you go back and check out the start of the series because that's where we'll be starting from. So today's video in particular is regarding checking for player collision with the ball. Uh, you could kind of see there, I don't know if I actually highlighted it, you can currently drive your player straight through the ball and it doesn't end the game, it doesn't reset the score or anything like that. Um, the ball keeps bouncing and you can keep controlling the player. So what we're going to do today is check for collision with the two objects and um, kind of create a stop scenario where you can't move the player anymore and the ball stops moving as well. So to do this, um, I'm going to actually uh, come down into where we defined the player and the ball before, right? This outer circle, which is in green, and the player here. Um, which is the orange rectangle and I'm going to start by calling these um, actually uh, giving them variable names so I'll call the ball the ball and then I'll say the player is our gamer um, and so the reason for doing that is we're gonna create a new function down here and we are gonna call it check collision so right after that we are gonna new line um, we are going to create a new function called check collision and uh, we have to give it some data so it knows what it's checking for and what it'll be checking is actually our gamers position and so since we created these as variables now they have the pi game attributes of rectangles and circles so we can pass in here their um, center points and then use that to ch check collision in our um, check collision function that we're going to create. So I'll just pass in the center X and center Y for both the player and the ball. Center Y. And okay, now let's go ahead and actually create this check collision um, function because right now it's not doing anything. We'll go up above our other functions and create a new one. And we'll call it define check collision. And so what we just passed in here, right, we passed in the player's X, the player's Y, the ball's X, and the ball's Y. And our actual check collision function is going to be checking based on the center point of the two. So uh, first let's check in the X direction. And let's say if the absolute value of the player right because you could be colliding from the left or from the right so the player's X position minus the ball's X position um, could be a negative value if uh, if your if the ball is coming in from the left or from the right it changes which direction but we just want an absolute check and um, so our ball right we made that a radius of 30 and our player is 30 pixels wide but we're checking based on the center point so it's going to be the radius plus half the width, which is going to be 45 for these characters. Okay, so that's checking that their X parameters overlap. But what about the scenario where the ball crosses the plane and your Y's don't overlap? So you actually need collision. Um, you need the X and the Y parameters simultaneously to be inside of those uh, parameters. So we're going to do basically the exact same formula and check in the Y direction that the player Y minus ball y is going to be less than and that'll be 55 because we made the rectangle um, 50 tall in the previous video so it's 25 plus the radius which is where we get 55 and then um, we're gonna pass in a lot of globals so that I don't have to pass them all in as uh, variables into the function I'm just gonna define global player x direction global player y direction global let's do come on 
uh, and then global we called it circle before now we're calling it ball that's okay not a big deal and then global let's say circle y direction so this is because if they collide which is what this if statement is saying if that's true then we want to set all four of those equal to zero so I'm gonna go ahead and copy these back down and create the logic And now we're saying, okay, well, if the two touch, then stop moving all four of them. And what's kind of cool, the way we wrote the code previously, and this was intentional, um, uh, we wrote it so that if we just set the direction equal to zero, there's gonna be no more um, changing direction or ability to control because it's all math based off that number either being positive or negative. And so when we set it to zero, it's not positive or negative. So we really kill it and just freeze it in place. So that's why we're gonna make all of those zero. Absolutely. So it's not happy with my formula here. Probably because I have a closed parenthesis for no reason. There we go. Okay. And then what we'll also do is we're gonna call a game over function inside of here that I'm actually gonna create separately just in case in a game if you wanted multiple different scenarios that could cause um, game over I like to sort of define that function as its own because this is specifically just the collision condition okay so let's go ahead and define game over and what we're gonna do inside of the game over function is um, we're actually going to display score game over font render. sorry we're not displaying score we want to display game over display game over and that's going to be equal to I know I did that in my notes because we want to take the text we did before to draw the score onto the screen and we're actually going to copy that up and put that into game over but we want to call this display game over rather and then in here we're going to say game over man and we don't need to add the score to it that's all we want to say but let's go ahead and make this one red on a black background it's a little more intimidating and I don't want to I don't want to put this in 1010 anymore. I want to put it around the middle of the screen. So I'm going to pick like 70, 300, because you have to remember, you're giving it a starting location, and this text is kind of long, so it'll stretch across the screen. Um, and rather than just font.render, let's make a new font up here. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Um, so remember, the font that we define for score is just size 20 but you want game over to kind of pop. So I'm gonna take this, we'll use the same free sans bold, but we'll make this guy 60. And now instead of font.render, we'll do game over font.render. Okay, and let's take a look here. So once we see collision, um, we're going to stop everything from moving and then we'll put game over on the screen. And let's see, this should be about all we need to do to check for collision and end the game. So let's take a look. Okay, I'm gonna give it a few, and then I'm gonna try to go get collision here. And there we go. So we, f we see it stops, but then it actually stops the objects in motion. I can't control it anymore, which is good. But there's a little bit of a gap, and that's just kind of because uh, it, the scan rate it's actually off by about one pixel it hasn't moved that one additional spot yet um, that's the sort of math that's really easy to tweak you can come into our check for collision um, function and rather than this be a 45 and a 55 you can make it a 44 and a 54 you can leave it as is if you want um, I'm gonna do it this way because I think yeah there we go now 
if you're gonna freeze frame on the game being over, you're gonna have some upset players if they can take a screenshot of it and clearly state like, hey, it didn't touch. So it's almost better to be one pixel more forgiving than one pixel less forgiving, especially um, with people playing games. So that's it for this video. There's how to check for collision between two objects and uh, create a game over condition. And in the next video, we'll be taking a look at some things like um, restarting the game and keeping track of a high score. So uh, hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully this tutorial has been fun for you. Um, eventually we should have a pretty fun game to make. And if you have any questions about what you saw in this one or stuff you want to make sure you see in future videos, uh, feel free to let me know about it in the comments. And uh, if you found this or any content on the channel useful, uh, feel free to throw down a like or subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.